the material that you are going to use uh, is HCl 0.05 molar, a saturated solution of calcium hydroxide. How can I know that it is a saturated solution? I can notice that I have some precipitate at the bottom of the solution. And calcium hydroxide, I will show you the calcium hydroxide is a white solid, white powder. Of course, I'm going to use an indicator, which is phenolphthalein. And I'm going to start by filtrating the saturated solution of calcium hydroxide. To filtrate a solution, we are going to use a filter paper. This is a filter paper. I want to show you how we tie a filter paper to do a correct filtration. Like this, and then like that. Then I open it three, one, two, two, three, this side and one this side. And I have now to take some amount of calcium hydroxide almost 60 because I have to do two titrations of 25 milliliters later on so I take almost 50 milliliter or 60 milliliter and I start the titration. As you see the dropping has started inside the beaker I add every time the level of liquid decreases inside the filter paper, I add more liquid. And I have to wait here until I have enough amount to do my pipetting. In this time, I can go to my burette, rinse it with distilled water and with my titrant. First, I rinse it with distilled water. Then I have to fill it with my titrant, which is HCl 0 0.05 molar. So I fill inside a beaker from the solution, stock solution I have. And I should fill the burette using a small funnel. I pour a little amount, few milliliters for the first rinsing. I try to get rid of the air bubble inside the lower part of my burette. I still have a big air bubble here. So I fill again. Okay, now I got rid of the air bubble. This is enough for rinsing. Now I have to fill it till the mark. So I put a little bit of my HCl 0.05 molar. I add a little bit more than the mark of the burette. I remove the funnel and I adjust the mark of the burette. Okay. Now my titrant is ready to start the titration. I have to look here at the filtration. Of course, at the beginning, I had to use a dry and clean beaker, a dry and clean beaker, and a dry and clean funnel to do the filtration of the saturated solution of calcium hydroxide. I have to wait a little bit until the amount here is enough to do my 25 milliliter pipetting. So using a dry pipette, I will get 25 milliliters 
of the filtrated calcium hydroxide and put them inside a dry and clean Erlenmeyer flask to do the titration. Okay, so my 25 milliliters of filtrated calcium hydroxide and the time when I titrate this amount, the calcium hydroxide is continuing to be filtrated to do the second titration later on. Now I have to add two to five drops of phenolphthalein, my indicator. Now I come to my burette. I have to insert a magnet ball. I will insert a magnet ball. Put the airline mayor at the center of my stirrer. Turn the stirrer on and start adding my titrant, which is HCl 0.05 molar. As you see, the phenolphthalein is pink because calcium hydroxide is basic. That's why the transition of color will be from pink to colorless because the solution after equivalency will be acidic, so the phenolphthalein is colorless inside acidic solution. I don't know exactly the volume of titrant, how much it is. That's why I have to go dropwise. Now the volume is almost six milliliters. My hand on the top of the burette and my eye should be on the color of my solution to close the top as fast as I can when I see the color has changed to colorless. Now the volume is almost 13 milliliter. Now the volume is almost 18 milliliters. I have to take care. Each drop will count now. Okay. I am very close to the equivalent point. I may need one more drop. I look at the volume, it is 18 point something. I try to add one more drop because the color is disappearing. Okay, one more drop. I may need another drop. Okay. And one more drop. OK. 
Okay. I still have a light pink color. I will try to add maybe a last drop to see the total disappearance of color. I think that's it. This is the total disappearance of color. I am done with the first titration. I turn the stirrer off and I go to the burette to get the correct volume. I should have my eye at the same horizontal level. So it is 19 milliliter exactly. I go to my report sheet and I note VE1 equals 19 milliliters. Now I have to wash my Erlenmeyer to refill the burette again, to go pipette 25 milliliter of the filtrated calcium hydroxide and do the second titration. With the same pipette, I go now to pipette the second portion of 25 milliliter filtrated calcium hydroxide. Twenty five milliliters into a dry, clean Erland Meyer flask. I add two drops of phenol phthalein. I should not forget to add the indicator, it will take directly the pinkish color inside a basic solution. I insert a magnet bar. The Erland Meyer must be placed at the center of the stirrer. I turn the stirrer on and I can start now my second titration. The first, the VE1 was 19 milliliters, so I can go quickly till, for example, 13, 14, or 15 milliliter. Then I will continue the titration dropwise. Okay, I will continue the titration dropwise. Sure, I have to get two close values because I pipetted from the same filtered solution, 25 milliliter exactly, and I'm titrating with the same titrant. So the volume that I will get now should be very, very close to VE1, which was 19 milliliters. Now I am 18 point something milliliters. I will continue drop by drop. The color is disappearing. I have to wait for the total disappearance of color. I think I should add one more drop, okay? So now I have the total disappearance of color. I am done with my titration. I turn the stirrer off and I go get the second. Yes, it is 18.9 milliliter. So VE2 is 18. 0.9 milliliters VE1 and VE2 now I can go to continue all my lab report and practically the experiment is done